So let me show you how to download one of my files. So after you purchase it, there's actually a checkout page and here in the corner -ish, it will say click here to download the files. But let's say that you closed out the page you need to get there from scratch. So what you'll need to do is click on your account and you'll go to purchases and reviews. Here you can see your purchases. So like for example, here is, let's say this is my file. This is a test file that I have made just for this tutorial. You're going to go over here to the right and click download files. This lets you know um, all of the all the fun facts like the the STL usage where you can find my Patreon, where you can get technical support using Discord. Here's a link a bunch of links to supplies for making ball jointed dolls. But you need to go down here to the bottom and click download. Okay. You're going to save it. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And I'm going to open it by going to my desktop, which is a disaster, and finding that PDF. So we're going to open this PDF. It'll open in any web browser. So I'm going to double click and open it. Okay, so inside this PDF um, is just the same rules, like the agreements in terms of use, which can always be found here. They're always updated at this link. Um, you know, you can sell stuff that you make. If you want unlimited sales, you can join my Patreon, yada yada. If you hover over this, well, I guess you can't click on that. You're supposed to be able to. Um, but if you click right here, oh, goodness, where it says, uh, click to download. Let me reopen that so that you can see it. Um, I try to make it pretty obvious. Usually there's a download or star icon. There's also more information that you can get help with here at the bottom, like Patreon, Discord, my email, my shop, my social media pages. This is the, the file usage that says basically you're not going to just mass produce my stuff. Um, but again, you'll just find this and click here to download. And it's going to open up this website called Colts 3D. Um, they're doing some maintenance right now, so their images are a little bit broken, but you'll need to make an account, um, and then you'll be able to download these. So you would click download, and it'll pop into your download history. Uh, the reason I use Colts 3D is because Etsy's file size limit will not let me upload a large file. I can only upload, like, 25 kilobytes worth of stuff. And my Baldrina dolls and all my STLs tend to be larger than that. Also, when you download your item from Colts 3D, you can never lose it as long as you have your account. I can't take it away from you. You can't lose access to it. If you if I update the file, you will get a free update. It'll contact you through email and be like, hey, that private paid private test download file that you downloaded just got a free update. And then you can re-download it. So normally you would click this um, purple download button and it'll download it for you. I'm not allowed to do that because this is my own design, so I'm going to pretend I clicked that download button. And up here in the corner of my screen, it says the download is in progress. Okay, so now I have this, um, and this is downloaded into my downloads folder, so I'm going to go into my file finder, go to my downloads, and it's right here. As you can see, I download a lot of files, uh, but you'll click on this one, and inside there is this folder and inside that there's another folder now if your file looks like a zipper like this you can't open it in your slicer software so you need to extract that first so you can click on that and then click extract all and I'm going to browse and extract it to my desktop and click extract so now it's extracting Awesome, and now it should be done. So it's right here, Aleth Art, and inside is um, my files. And sometimes Cult 3 likes to double zip them, so this has the, the use and remix rights. Um, but this is another zip file, so I have to take that out. So it's sometimes a little bit tedious. I try really hard to make it not do that, so we're just going to extract that to my desktop. I need to fix that. Um, I know why they do that. It's like a weird little glitch that they have. So 
but once that's done extracting, we'll open it up. Okay. So inside this one, like we did, it's still zipped. We had to unzip that one and we unzipped it to our desktop. So we're going to go back to our desktop by clicking on desktop. Here is the file, human cabot, ball drain, doll. That's what we need. So when you go inside, you should be able to see different folders. The unsupported STL files are for FDM printing using PLA. Resin STLs are for um, resin printing. You can't use the pre-supported resin STLs on an FDM printer. This is only for resin. Uh, these are measuring tools to help you scale um, my dolls. So if we make these icons bigger, you can see that this is a solid cabot. You can drop that into your slicer software and see how tall it is and decide how tall you want your cabot to be by changing the percentage. Um, but now that these files are here, you can open up your slicer software. I use Bamboo Studio. And you can open those files, the unsupported STL files, into your slicer software. once it's done thinking. So we're going to open a new project. Oh, oops, sorry, create a new project. We're going to add some objects and we're going to find them in my desktop and they're going to be under human cabot, unsupported, and we'll just start with the head. I'm going to do these, these three items. Uh, we don't need them as one object, with multiple parts. So there they are. Now I can start, you know, setting this up for print. But hopefully that makes it easier on how to download. I'm trying to fix so that you don't have to unzip your files twice, so you only have to do it once. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me. If you're having issues with the PDF, I can send you the direct link um, so that you don't have to download the PDF. But the PDF has a bunch of useful stuff in it. Which is why I send it, because it has like the links to my YouTube and stuff. Well, I guess it doesn't, but I should link to my YouTube in there. Um, but you can find my social medias just by searching my name. It has all the rules and stuff. And uh, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just contact me on Etsy and I'm happy to help.